All right, so I wanted to do a little chat here about this article in particular. Two ex-Googlers want to make bodegas and mom and pop corner stores obsolete. So what this basically is, is two guys over on the West Coast are making a device or a, basically a giant vending machine that they're calling bodega. Now, not only am I a New Yorker, I'm Hispanic, I'm Latino. Bodegas in New York are basically a part of the culture. You're going to be seeing them on every corner. They're going to be selling some of the best stuff and have some of the best people working for them as well. Because it's all about that connection as well. It's not just, oh, this is a place where you buy your shit and go. But now, let's take a look at this article real quick. So, <laughs> I, I can't look at this article without laughing because... It shows how ignorant some people are when it comes to using a word that they, they very clearly didn't do their research on. I, I saw on Twitter in regards to the reactions that people have been giving towards the name Bodega being used for their product. And they're like, okay, uh, we, didn't, we wanted to appreciate what a Bodega is. We wanted to show admiration towards it. But that's not what you're doing. A bodega is a very specific thing. If you want to put up what is basically a glorified giant vending machine, just call it something else. Call it its own thing. Make it unique. At least then people wouldn't be down your throat trying to show how you're basically insulting culture in a way. But yeah, as you can see here, they talk about how bodegas are known in New York and Los Angeles as just kind of the go-to grocery store. They're very valuable in our culture and society because they're just the kind of the go-to place. No matter what you need, you usually find what you want there. If it's food, if it's some emergency necessities, if it's drinks, uh, if you want scratch-off cards, anything along those lines. So this guy, he spent 13 years as a product manager at Google, Paul McDonald. Now, if you're a product manager for that goddamn long and you don't realize how the name of a product or the implications that a certain name for a certain product can give towards people and your consumer base, you're basically going to be setting yourself up for failure as far as promotions and marketing are concerned because the name Bodega is a very unique name to a specific entity within certain culture which is like New York and Los Angeles culture where it's the corner store run by like Latinos and usually other immigrant, uh, immigrant races. And it's an insult. When you think about it, you're going to be putting these giant vending machines in places that as they claim these are places that don't really have too many stores available to them. Meanwhile, they're putting them in the West Coast. Hello. And on top of that, you put your logo as the cat. I get the joke, the bodega cats, uh, but every bodega has a cat inside, and I swear to God it is true. I live in a very predominantly Mexican and Hispanic neighborhood over here in New York, and there's like nine bodegas next to me, and every single one of them has a cat. Am I complaining? No, I like cats, so. Besides the point, Event this is what he says. Eventually, centralized shopping locations won't be necessary because there will be 100,000 bodegas spread out with one always 100 feet away from you. Now, there's an inherent problem with the product because the way these products are set up is that they're five foot wide pantry boxes with non-perishable items that you can pick up at a convenience store. Okay, cool. But now, here's the problem. Why bother using it? If these are non-perishable items, these are items that you're going to be able to get pretty much anywhere. So you're going to get this, I would imagine stuff like mac and cheese, shampoo, toilet paper, paper towels, things like that. What's to stop somebody from just saying, I'm going to go to Walmart. I'm going to go to Target. I'm going to go to Stop and Shop. I'm going to go to Pathmark, Key Food, any of these bigger chains that would usually have these exact same items for a much lower price. Even I have to admit that I'd rather go to someplace like Stop and Shop, buy slightly in bulk, compared to going to a bodega and getting a box of mac and cheese. 
a box of mac and cheese in Stop and Shop, you can get three for the same price as you would for one in a bodega. But that's usually because of the cost of acquisition. But now, what you're trying to do is take that exact model of just having these perishables, have it with automation, which is going to bring up your cost, restocking fees, which is going to bring up your cost, and monitoring fees, which is going to bring up your cost. Meaning, to sell those, all those items, you're going to raise up those costs as well. So it's like pseudo inflation in a way, but it's all done by themselves. There's no reason for people to go ahead and use these boxes. It doesn't solve an immediate problem. It's never been a source of, oh man, there's no stores near us. Oh no, on the West Coast, we can't get anything nearby. In some cases that may be true, but also on the West Coast, most people have vehicles. In New York, pretty much, no matter where you go in New York, at least within the, the boroughs, you're going to be next to some sort of public transportation, which there's bodegas everywhere too. So even if you're passing by to try and get to a form of public transportation, you're going to be passing by at least four stores. On the other side, you're going to be passing a lot more larger big box stores. You're going to be passing Targets, Walmarts, Lotlist, um, Safeway, and all stores like that. What's to stop you from just going there? There's no immediate problem being addressed here. And on top of that, it's not like it's making things easier or better, especially if because of the cost that it's going to choose, uh, to because of the cost that it's going to be to actually install one of these things and to stock it up and to monitor it constantly and switch out the inventory constantly, it's going to bring up the prices of everything that's in there. Unless by some magic, they're able to go ahead and work out a deal with the suppliers to sell them for much cheaper to have them in those boxes, which that will never happen. It will not. That's just not how economics works. If they're going to be putting their product out there, they're going to want to make a return on it per sale. And it's not like you're going to end up buying in surplus and then putting them in those machines to sell for uh, the same price as the surplus. You're going to be selling them for higher so that you can make a profit. It's not hard to distinguish that this is an easy money-making ploy for the lazy consumer, the people who don't really want to go too far to get the things that they need, or for the college student that's too lazy to leave their dorm, which is evident from the people that they say they're targeting in their own article, that they're targeting college dorm rooms, for the people who want to just have everything accessible at a whim. But here's the thing, that teaches bad habits. Not only is it bad habits as far as, oh, you're making people lazier and trying to have the added convenience be something that everybody expects going forward, but it also teaches bad spending habits because nobody should be paying more money for something that they can easily get for much less per just traveling a little bit longer. Especially in college. College is a time where you should be trying to save money, which is difficult in itself because you're paying for books, you're paying for food, you're paying to go there. Sometimes you're paying for dorming depending on the situation you're in. There's a lot of money being spent and you're trying to make them spend more. It's, to me, that makes no sense. So looking at this, in, on top of that, these two guys, one dude is very clearly white as hell and it's the one that's usually doing all the talking uh paul mcdonald is the one on the right he very much is the one that is like the mouthpiece here i don't believe i've heard uh ashwath rajan give a statement about the product but from paul mcdonald it's very evident that he really in his mind he sees no problems this is one of his uh, things about his product. By studying their buying behavior, we're hoping to eventually figure out how the needs of people in one apartment building differ from those in another. We can customize the items in one dorm versus the next. Brings up your cost, brings up the cost per item per building as well, because depending on the items that they would be buying, if it's a more expensive item, naturally what that's going to do is force you to buy more of that expensive product, meaning that product is going to go up in price. And if it's the other way around, products are going to go down in price because you're going to be buying a lot cheaper product. However, you're not going to be making much of a profit, so you're going to be trying to drive up those prices anyway. So let's scroll down a little bit more. 
all 50 new bodega locations are on the west coast by the end of 2018 he hopes to have more than a thousand on the west coast he plans to quickly go national with this this will not survive in a place like new york this will not survive in a place like los angeles it does they do not pay real retail space Here's, here's the kicker. It pitches itself as an, an, an amenity or a convenience to property managers. Okay. How do you make your money? Realistically. I could see things like that surviving for a long time. And they make a couple of good points. At gyms, that makes a lot of sense. Because you can have it stocked with power bars, protein powder, things like that that a gym normally sometimes carries, however not in as variety of as wide variety of stock as many people would like. I could see it succeeding there as a business ploy where you're going to be going to these stores and putting power bars, energy drinks, protein powder, things like that. That's fine. That makes sense and that could succeed business-wise. However, the scale of it, not that high, because it all depends on the gym. If the gym already has their own stuff, there's no need for it. On top of that, I'm pretty sure they're not, the gym is, itself is not going to be making a full cut off of the sales that are made through that product. Well, there has to be some sort of percentage that goes towards the bodega product. Um, putting them in dorm rooms, I think that's an inherently bad idea. It teaches bad spending habits. Maybe for dollar items. Dollar items make sense. Things like the little soaps, travel size stuff. That's fine because sometimes it's, it is difficult to go out. Or if it's an emergency, you need, uh, you have no shampoo, you have, like, you're filthy dirty and you need to shower, you have a job interview or something. That makes sense. But not for food. Because f the thing about food is that food goes up in price whenever it's easier to get. Right? Or. In the cases of the big box stores, they buy so much in bulk that they can sell them for lower because they're spending less from the initial cost. However, for something like this, because of the price of automation, restocking, and tracking, that price is inherently going to be high. And I don't think they real. I, I hope they realize that, but I don't think they do. Because they're talking about it as, as if it's so simple. And they have automated systems, apparently, that can track people's spending habits. Okay, how much did that cost? And how much is that going to cost to keep it consistently running and updating constantly? How are you going to be able to take all that information and keep track of it? Unless everything, absolutely everything, is automated. In which case, why, why do they need you? Why do need you? Why does anybody need your product? For that matter, they could buy your software. If your software is that good, stores will buy that. Big box stores to keep track of people's spending habits, so they know what people should be, what they should be stocking more of. However, you know what they have for that? People. There's people that already do that. You're just taking the easy way out of doing that. But you can't really do anything about the restocking. You're going to have to have people go do that for you. Meaning you're going to have to pay the employee costs for constant restocking. However, at the same time, because you're not going to be forced to restock every single day, it's not going to be a very consistent business where employees would be like, hey, you know what? Let's go work for Bodega. We can make a decent living there. We can make a living wage. Because at the most, they'll maybe hit two or three boxes based on overall usage, because it's completely dependent on the area that you put those boxes. I, I've been rambling on for so damn long. This article in itself is just an absolute mess. I personally believe that this kind of product would not succeed in today's environment. I think that it is an insult to Latino, Hispanic culture and immigrant culture as a, in general, especially in Los Angeles and New York, where people survive working and living in bodegas, basically. So these guys need to be careful. If they're going to be naming their product something this specific, they need to make sure that it's not going to be something that is viewed as competition or as a way to push out those other stores because they may say that it doesn't and they may say that that's not their vision. However, if say they're able to actually bring down their price, the prices for everything that they put in there to where it's much more affordable than going to a bodega or a big box store, then then that's where it's going to really hit the bodegas hard.
and it's going to make it a lot harder for them to maintain their rent. It's going to make them a lot harder to maintain their business. So they need to be very careful. And with the backlash that they got from social media, I've been seeing post after post about it. They really need to go ahead and reevaluate their name and their branding because push comes to shove. The longer this extends, the more backlash there's going to be. They can try and say, oh, we're, we, we want to go ahead and show appreciation towards these people and what they do. But if you're going to be pushing them out, don't call them the very name that they are. Because that's like, that's basically like you're driving the bus over somebody and then backing it up over them again. So just to go ahead and do a little TLDR, Bodega product, giant vending machine, not worth the money, not worth the cost to implement it. And I believe that it's going to be a system that does fail. And if it does succeed, the only places that I could see it succeeding are in the places that would be able to put specific products in there, like gyms, um, perhaps some pharmacies, smaller pharmacies for certain products, and maybe libraries. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cyber Owl Live. And yeah, this is uh this is a PR disaster. <laughs>